guys. Welcome back to Finn Scales and Fluffy Tales. My name is Bryn and today's video is puppy haul number two. So for those of you who don't have a puppy or maybe you're looking to get a puppy um, or dogs in general, especially if you never had a dog before, you have to buy a lot of stuff when you're getting a dog. And then depending on what breed you have, you might have to buy um, slightly more things. And the reason why I say that is because, especially for grooming products, some breeds um, need a lot more grooming than others. For example, a poodle, like what Molly is, like what Alex and I are getting, they need a lot of grooming. They need a lot of grooming products, and I would say probably a lot more than other breeds. Like, let's say you're getting a standard poodle versus a Labrador Retriever. The standard poodle is going to need, in my opinion, a, a bit more specialized products than the lab would just because poodles have a very specific coat. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Um, I have everything kind of, most of the things I'm gonna be showing you set out in front of me today because it would just be easier for me to pick it up and show you. So the first thing I'm gonna start off with is the new grooming products we got in within the past couple of weeks. The first thing I'm gonna show you guys is this. It is an Arm & Hammer toothbrush set, which I already, I really trust the Arm & Hammer brand, which is why I got this. Um, this product specifically came from Amazon. It has two different sizes of toothbrush. I'll probably use the small end since our toy poodle will be small. And I do really like that it comes with this finger brush, mainly because if our puppy needs a bit more coaxing to get used to getting her teeth brushed, I will use the finger brush first. Hey, Daisy. <laughs> so basically, um, I want to be brushing her teeth every day. Small dogs especially have a tendency to have bad teeth. So if I can save us any money by brushing her teeth every day, then that's what I'm going to do. Um, the next grooming product I want to show you guys is this NutriVet Ear Rinse. Now, this product is just for cleaning out her ears. This will be used once a week. This wasn't that expensive. I got it on Amazon. It was probably, it was around $5. So I thought that was pretty good. Um, the next product I'm gonna be using probably a lot when she's a puppy because a lot of puppies are prone to tearing but this is the Spa Lavish Blueberry Facial, and this is a tear stain face wash. So if you guys ever see dogs, especially like um, dogs that have long hair around their face, so this could be poodles, doodles with light hair, um, Shih Tzus, Maltese, Yorkies, even Pomeranians, they are, these breeds can be prone to tear staining. That red stuff around their eyes that, and also possibly their mouth that makes their face stink, that is called yeast. And the only way to get rid of that is to A, or one, wash the face, possibly every single day or multiple times a day, or two, and two, both of these go together. You have to wash the face and keep the face dry as much as possible. So um, I'm, I wanted to get actually a different product, but the pishpad.com was out of that product. Um, the, the product I got for detangling, which I don't have here, I did order it, but it didn't come in yet, is her Not Anymore Detangler from pishpad.com. I also wanted to get their tear stain remover, but I couldn't get a hold of it, and I was worried it wouldn't come in. So I got this Spa Lavish stuff, and according to many people online, this stuff really works. Um, next, I will show you her shampoo and conditioner. I will be completely bathing her every two weeks. These are both Chris Christensen brand. There we go. And these will have to be diluted um, because they are concentrated, but that's good because it means that it'll last longer. So each of these bottles cost $10. I didn't think that was such a bad price considering I wanted a bit better like a bit more high quality shampoo for her. I really want her to have a good coat and I trust Chris Christensen's products to protect the coat. Um, the next thing I got for her is this cute little top knot pillow. It has three different sides. So it has the poodle side, the pink side, and the purple side. Now this pillow is pretty small. It's probably about eight inches long maybe. 
Um, this isn't the kind of top knot pillow that I was used to seeing from like other dog videos and stuff, but I think it'll still work and it'll fit her so she can either rest her paws under it and put her head on top and then maybe when she gets older she'll rest her paws like on the outside and let rest her head there. But this is basically for when I'm doing her poodle top knots every day. Um, let's see. The next grooming product I got, which is not really specifically for grooming, but is this microfiber bath mat. This is a memory foam bath mat. And the reason I got this is because I wanted to give her something soft to lay on while I was doing her grooming, especially as she gets older, she might have to be groomed a long time. So depending on how long she has to be, you know, sitting up at the table while I'm brushing her, she, it might be uncomfortable for her to lay on there with like nothing or just a blanket. So I got this pad for her. Plus when we go on vacation, I can just bring this pad along and then this will be familiar to her. So she will like, no, she will already be familiar with it and we won't have to recondition her to anything. Um, this product also isn't really for grooming, but these are just unscented baby wipes. And I got these at Walmart. I didn't actually specifically buy these for the puppy. These were in our wedding emergency kit and they didn't get used. So this will be useful for like, if she has any poop stuck to her butt, a lot of puppies, especially when they first come home, get diarrhea from the stress of moving and stuff. So they can get, or, you know, changing foods, basically anything. Growing up with a small breed puppy, um, she had poops stuck on her butt a lot, more than I would like to admit. She just, it just took her a while for her digestive system to like level off and be okay with what we were doing at home. And so I'm expecting, especially puppies, they get into messes. So this will be in her tote as well. Um, excuse me. The next product I'm gonna show you guys is, I have it over here with the food section, but it's not really food. This product is called NutraCal. And this product specifically is for puppies. Now, this is not a food. It's kind of like a treat, but basically, especially if you have a small breed puppy, you want to have some of this on hand. And actually, I wasn't gonna buy this, but, my, but Molly's breeder suggested it because puppies and sometimes kittens, if they get stressed out and they're not eating with them being so small, they could go into what is called hypoglycemic shock, which for those of you who don't know is basically kind of like diabetic shock where their blood sugar lowers so much from not eating that they could pass out and go into a coma, which is really bad. So if your puppy is not eating, you wanna give them some of this and it is a high calorie supplement to boost their blood sugar. So that's what this is for. So we have some of this on hand just in case. We probably won't need to use this, but you know, it's good to have some just in case. Now we're gonna be getting to the food items. The first thing I'm gonna show you guys are these dog water bottles. They're both the Lixit brand. I got these on Amazon. We have a 32 ounce and a 16 ounce. And these bottles are going to be what our puppy is gonna be drinking out of. And I know, and yes, these are for dogs. They are not for rabbits. They are specifically made for dogs. And I know some people will be against dogs drinking out of water bottles, but personally, I prefer this. This, the water bottles prevents puppies from playing in the water and making a mess with it. And it keeps their face and their hair very clean. So I was going to use bottles with our Shih Tzu puppy specifically because she would, our Shih Tzu puppy would have had hair around her face and yeast, yeast growing on the fur can actually cause a secondary skin infection. So for those of you who don't know, if you have a breed that has long hair on their face and you never wash it and they have that really gross smell around their face, that is from yeast. And if it gets on their skin, they can actually get a secondary skin infection from the yeast growing on their hair, which is pretty, pretty bad in my opinion. So that is one reason I wanted to use the bottles. We will be getting a Shih Tzu eventually. So when our Shih Tzu would 
come home, our poodle would have to be trained on water bottles anyway because you can't have water bottles and bowls in your house because the dog won't the, the dog who needs to use who definitely needs to use the bottle won't know not to go to the bowl but I still wanted to use these bottles because the reason is because even though I'm going to be keeping her in a poodle clip most of the time with the shaved face and the shaved feet if we ever wanted to try a different type of haircut such as the asian fusion ones or leave her fluffy and her face would grow out i cannot stand wet face on any dog it is it is the worst feeling ever when i worked at dogtopia we had a lot of dogs with long hair and anytime the doodles or doodle puppies would go and drink out of the water bottle and wipe it on me like wipe their face on me Ooh, I literally can't stand it. It's like for any of you who have worked in the food industry in the restaurant industry and had to touch soggy food in the sink, that's what it feels like when a dog wipes their white their wipes their wet face on you. I literally cannot stand it. So if I ever wanted to change her haircut, these water bottles are gonna come in handy. Plus, um, I don't know how much we're gonna be taking her to the groomer, so when her face hair grows out, definitely don't want that getting stained. But I also got these spoolies. I bought these with the bottles and these are to be able to clean inside the spout because if you don't have something to clean them with, then they could harbor bacteria. So if you're gonna use bottles, which is perfectly fine, just make sure you have something to clean the inside of the spout. Um, the next thing I'm gonna show you guys are these two Kongs. Now, these Kongs, you might say, oh, those are really big for a toy poodle. Well, I got them in this size because I wanted to make sure, absolutely positively sure that she could not choke on these or swallow them in any way. And I think these are big enough that she will not be able to do that um, at any point in her life. And the reason why I got two of them is because for those of you who don't know, Poodles of all sizes, so I'm talking about standard miniature and toy poodles, are all very smart. Not just standard poodles, but all sizes are ranked second in intelligence to the Border Collie. So because they are so smart and so energetic and so active, you need to find ways to keep their brain busy. So with these, probably with some of her meals, I will be putting some of her food in here and maybe adding like water or goat's milk and then freezing it if it's dry food or just putting it in here and freezing it if it's wet food and then letting her get her meal out of these instead of just eating from her bowl. So I don't know, I, we, I did get her a food bowl, but I don't know if she's actually gonna be eating out of it a lot. But we do have these two Kongs and these, are, these can be used as fetch toys and they're basically just really fun things that I can use as brain, brain puzzles for our puppy. So that's why I have two of them, especially if we're using them for meals. You wanna have more than one so that you can freeze one and wash one at the same time. So since we're still on the topic of food, I will show you her food bowl. This is her food bowl. Yes, I got it. I got her name put on it. It's spelled Molly, M-O-L-L-I-E, which if you saw my last video, you would know that, but I don't know. I really like that spelling. It makes it look a little bit more girly to me. And let's see, I got this food bowl for like $20 online, $23. This was the smallest size they offered, but I couldn't pass it up because of how pretty purple it is. I really, really like it. Um, now, I did think it was actually gonna be, I don't know what I expected, but this is just like monogrammed on there. You can kind of, I don't know if you can see the, yeah, there it is, the seam right there. But I still really like it, and it's personalized to her. She's not gonna be eating out of this a whole lot because like I said, I'm gonna be using brain teasers on her instead most of the time, but I couldn't pass it up. I needed to get her a food bowl. So that is all the food items we got. Now, the next items I'm gonna be showing you guys are for the walk. So I have two of these treat pouches. They're really nice. They have a magnet insert. And what I like about them is they're made of silicone. Silicone? Silicon? I think it's, I think it's called silicone. I know silicone and silicon are different. 
but it's basically made of kind of like a rubbery material, which I like because if you have like food in here, so for example, on our walks, mostly we're gonna be using um, real meat, like uh, boiled chicken because when you take your dog outside, the outside environment is way more distracting for them than inside your house in your living room where they're super familiar with. So on top, they will have all these distractions and you as the owner will be competing with all those distractions outside for your dog to listen to you. So you wanna have super high value treats in your treat pouch, but I will probably be carrying one of these around the house with us. Inside, we're gonna be using things like freeze-dried meat, freeze-dried liver. Um, we're gonna be using maybe a few store-bought treats, not too many of those though. And especially for her grooming, she's gonna be getting freeze-dried cheese because I want to give her something extra special. The cheese is only gonna be her grooming treat. She will not get that at any time else. But these are really good for walks. They're really easily washable, which I like. You can literally throw these in the sink and wash them. And I got two of them, one for me and one for Alex, or if one's dirty and one's clean or whatever. But I wanted to have two of them since there's gonna be two of us walking her. Um, let's see. I also got these two leashes at Walmart. I got a pink one and a black one. They're both um, five feet long, which is a really good length for walking. Um, probably I'll use the pink one most of the time and Alex will want to use the black one, but I wanted to get two different colors So we have these two leashes and I am NOT going to be using a retractable leash with her. I just I Use them with my childhood dog growing up, but now that I'm older I really don't like retractable leashes. They don't give you a lot of control if you let your dog go too far ahead They are they would be nice for trails though, but again only if your dog still had pretty good recall so we got these two five foot leashes, pink and black from Walmart, only $5 a piece. I knew they were gonna be pretty cheap. Um, now this isn't really for the walk. She will not be using this to walk, but I got her this really cute mermaid, pink and purple mermaid collar. You can kind of see the pattern on it. I got this from Etsy as well. I paid $13 for this collar and it can, it's, it's adjustable so I can adjust it. Still not, Oops. <laughs> Still not sure if I'm gonna use it. It might be too wide for her neck because she's gonna be tiny. She is, let's see, today is September 10th. I was in contact with her breeder yesterday. She is now eight weeks old and she is 3.1 pounds at eight weeks old, which means right now, our little Molly weighs less than Daisy. Daisy, our house rabbit, our dwarf, rabbit who's a hall and lop weighs four and a half pounds and our little our little puppy weighs 3.1 pounds she weighs like a whole almost a whole pound and a half less than daisy does right now but we have this pink collar this will not this will just be for show just to be pretty she will not have a leash attached to this i'm still waiting on her name tag to get here which i ordered from swirly rose pets swirly rose pets but anyway she has swirly rose has an instagram so since she has an instagram i was scrolling on instagram and saw her and that's where i got molly's name tag from but i'm still waiting on it but this is her cute little collar we will be adjusting it but like i said i might not use it that much anyway and let's see there's a few other things we have the next thing i'm going to talk about are these this is pepper spray now a few people on that you guys might be wondering why I have pepper spray why I specifically bought pepper spray for when our puppy comes home and the reason is because when you are walking a dog other dogs that are off leash even when they're not supposed to be are more likely to come up to you with Molly being a very small breed like I said in my last video, she will be seven to seven and a half pounds as a full grown adult. Max, she will probably be, her mom was slightly bigger than her dad. Her mom is 11 inches at the shoulder and her dad is 10 inches at the shoulder. That is less than a foot tall at the shoulder. Molly is tiny. So, and she will be tiny for her whole life. So one bite, from a larger dog 
could kill her. So I bought this pepper spray to protect myself, Alex, and Molly from large dogs that come up to us unexpectedly on leash. Now, I am not expecting to use these. I hope I never, ever, ever have to. But for those of you who have small breeds especially, and you're worried about large breed dogs or mostly it's irresponsible owners, carry pepper spray or, some, or a stick or something when you walk your dog. Because like I said, if you have a small dog, one bite is all it takes to devastate your puppy or dog or whatever. One bite. Even if you have a large breed and it's a puppy, if you're taking your dog out in public walking, they, you never know what you're going to run into, but you can't not take your dog in public. Your dog needs socialization, so be prepared. Hopefully I will never ever have to use this and this will only be a last resort, but I will not hesitate to use this pepper spray on any dog or person who I think is a threat to me, Alex, or Molly. So, I just had to talk about that for a second, but if you have a dog, even, even if it's not a small dog, this can be very useful in emergency situations. So that's why we have pepper spray. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about on the walk is something else that could be controversial, which is why I saved it for last. Um, I am a person who believes in more holistic medicine and approach to dogs. I don't think that regular, that veterinarians who aren't holistic veterinarians don't know what they're talking about. It's not that at all. It's just that I do, the, the thing about animal medicine is that it's not regulated as much as human medicine is. And the difference is with human doctors and human nurses and anyone in the medical field for humans, regularly has to take tests to make sure that they're up to snuff with all the new things going on around them. Like basically doctors in the human world cannot fall behind on practices, whereas the animal medicine world is not as regulated. Veterinarians who went to vet school like 30 years ago are still practicing the same way most of them 30 years ago that right now, even though that some things are changing. So because of those few things that we will also be doing something different with her flea and tick medication she will not be getting oral flea and tick medication and i will not be putting anything on her skin that can soak into her body because i think that's kind of topical but it soaks in it absorbs into their skin i don't want to give her any type of flea and tick prevention like that so i will be using wonderside this is the flea and tick repellent that I will be using with Molly. And that is because I do not want her to get negative side effects from flea collars or the medication at all. So just like me, I put on bug spray when I go outside. So in the summertime and when there's bugs, I will be using this on her. But anyway, this Wonderside is just for fleas and ticks. I know it's not a perfect product, However, I think that this product is much better than the medications that they use and I definitely don't want to put a flea collar on her. So this is what I'm going to be using. Um, if you guys don't want to use that, that is perfectly fine, but I feel comfortable using this, especially since I will be bathing her every two weeks anyway, and I won't even have to use this in the winter when there are no bugs. So that's why I decided to buy Wonderside instead of all that flea and tick medicine. So let's see, we have, it's been about 30 minutes. It took me that long to talk about all this stuff, but I still have a few things to show you. Um, the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is this purple squishy bed. Now this will not be in her crate for a while because I don't want her to pee and poop in it because she probably will and I don't wanna have to wash it a million times. So she'll be using this when we can watch her until she learns that she can only uh, potty in her crate or like once she learns that the potty pad material is what she's supposed to go on, then we can use half the crate for a potty pad and the other half for her bed so that she'll know the difference. 
So that is, this is her bed. I got it from Amazon and it was about $15. So not too bad, super excited about that. So that was her bed. I'm gonna put it over there because the last item I have to show you is her Sherpa carry bag. Okay, I had to clean off this little table that's in front of me to show you this bag because it's kind of big. I mean, it's not, it's not that big. I'll hold it up a little bit. It's not that big, but this um, carrier is the Sherpa brand and if I'm being honest, I didn't really want the black one. I wanted one that was a little, that had a little bit more color or like a pattern on it, but Sherpa did not have any available when I wanted to get one. And I wanted to make sure that it would be here in time. I could have gotten a different brand of bag because, and I really wanted to, I was really tempted. But the reason I didn't is because of this strap right here. This strap that is attached to the bag is super important because this bag can act as a car seat. You can you put thread the um, seat belt of your car through this strap and buckle it into your car. So this bag is not going anywhere. Other bags on Amazon that are not the Sherpa brand do not have this strap. And I really wanted the strap because of that. That is the sole reason why I settled for this black bag instead of the other fancier bags. I think I will get her a fancier bag later. Daisy, what are you doing? I think I will get Molly a fancier bag later, but that bag will only be for like carrying her places. I won't be using it to put her in the car because it, again, it doesn't have this strap which is the most important thing. Um, now this bag, because of its size, can also be used on airplanes. So if I ever wanted to fly with Molly, I could put her in this bag and take her on the plane. It does have a shoulder strap and a handle. So it has, here's the shoulder strap, it's detachable. So you can detach it here at the end, on both ends actually. And it has a carry handle. Another thing I like about it is it has two entrances to the bag. So it has the top entrance for you to put your pet in for, to lift them in and out. But what I really like about it as well is this side entrance. This side entrance is really important if you want to be able you want to be able to get your dog ideally used to this bag before continued use. You want them to feel comfortable and safe in here. And by having this side entrance, you can coax your dog in so they learn to go in and out by themselves. Um, it comes with this padding on the bottom, but you can add your own. You can put a blanket in there as well and some toys or chews or something. Another thing that I like about it is, if you guys can see, this D-ring on the inside. So what you could do, if you wanted this to be used as a car seat and not, and not just like put them in here and close the top, you could strap this into the car and then keep this flap open and then your dog could sit up and look out and then with this little D-ring on the inside here, you could probably see it, you can attach their harness, like you could get like one of those small like a small tether and attach their harness to this d-ring so they can't jump out but they're still secure in the car without having to be enclosed in a bag if your pet doesn't like that and this bag only cost me 30 dollars and it has all of those different uses as you guys know alex and i both have family that lives out of state my family lives in central pa alex's family lives in northwest ohio so when we we travel far for holidays. This Thanksgiving, we're going all the way to Pennsylvania to visit my family. And then for Christmas, we're going all the way to Ohio to visit Alice's family. So Molly will be coming with us on both of those trips. And she will be riding in the car with this bag. Another thing I wanted to mention about pet safety is never put your pet in the front seat of the car. And there's a few reasons for this. Now, if you have an older car, 
which th your car would have to be made at least in the 90s for this to be true or if you have a classic car. The reason why you should not put your pet in the car is because most cars, except for some older cars, have airbags in the front seat. So if you get in an accident, the airbag will kill your pet, especially if it's small. Now, if you have a large breed, it might not kill your pet, but it could definitely hurt them really bad. So you never want to have your pets in the front seat of the car. You always want to have them contained with something, whether that's in a bag that's strapped to the car or like I do with Daisy, in a carrier that is squished between the seats, a hard-sided carrier, in a crate in the trunk. And when I say the trunk, not the trunk of a car, the trunk of like an SUV or a minivan or something like that. Or if your pet doesn't like to be contained inside something, you could attach a harness to them and then find, I think they have these straps that you clip to a harness and then you clip it into the seatbelt thingy in the car. So I think they have those too. But do not put your pet in the front seat, even if someone is holding them. Somebody holding your pet is not enough to protect them from a car accident because I'm not saying that you're not a safe driver, but you can't control other people on the road. So somebody could crash into you and cause an accident and kill your pet, which you definitely do not want. So even if you have large breeds, put them in the back seat, use a harness and seatbelt them into the car. Even if you walk them on a collar, I do not suggest attaching their collar to the car. And that is because a collar could choke them if you get into an accident, which of course we do not want. If you guys do decide to look it up, I don't even know, I looked it up a while ago, but maybe only one or two states in the entire country, in the entire United States, requires that pets be restrained in the car as a law. In my opinion, pets should be restrained in the car just like kids have to be restrained by law. So, kids and people, of course. So, again, that's why I bought this particular carrier. This should fit Molly throughout her life. She should be able to fit in this even as an adult. She might not be able to completely stand up in it as an adult, but you know, she'll be able to lie down in it, which is what we want. So anyway, give me one second. That is it for this video, you guys. Um, I still have some more supplies on the way. I know I showed you some of the toys I bought her, but I knew this video was gonna be way too long. So I'm gonna do a toy specific haul once I get her last few toys in the mail. And I'm going to do a bow specific haul once I get Be the Beauty by Paris bows in. And I think this video is gonna be super long. I might even have to split this one up too. So, oh man, I, I had to buy so much stuff for the puppy and I wanted to tell you guys about everything that I bought. So, um, I, this video is going to be long. It's, it's a longer video, but I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing all the stuff I got for her and she's coming home in a few weeks. Let's see. Today is September 10th. That's the day that I filmed this video. She's coming home on the 25th. So about two weeks and two days she will be home. This weekend, Alex and I are still going to be doing a lot of stuff to get ready for her to come home and we still have a lot of things to do to prepare. I'm getting the other pets ready as well as getting the house ready. Excuse me. Um, I've heard that getting a puppy is a lot like nesting for a newborn baby and it is kind of like that. We've been going through our stuff, trying to get rid of some stuff, cleaning the house, making sure that anything big that we need to do is done before the puppy gets here because we need to give her almost our full attention. So, even though this video is long, I think I'm still going to post it as one whole video. I don't think it would be worth it to split it up. But I hope you guys enjoyed puppy haul number two. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Finscales Fluffy Tales for more pictures of Molly and the other pets. And I will catch you guys on the next one.